Our puppies are with their puppy raisers and they go to their puppy raisers from seven weeks and stay for between 12 months to 18 months, uh, being trained with puppy raisers and being brought up in a normal home situation. Our dogs are Labradors and Golden Retrievers. We do crossbreed the Labrador to the Retriever and as you can see we have German Shepherds as well. We haven't bred German Shepherds for litters, they're all named alphabetically, so A to Z, Z are donation dogs. Um, each of these dogs is from a separate litter. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on this kind of uh, interaction with his dog, what kind of, I mean, temperament Ophelia is, and then if you know the temperament, then it helps you as a trainer to know what I kind of, uh, to teach the dogs to know exactly what is it that they need to do, uh, it's the clicker. So Kayla will click and feed the dog, and then uh, we will also use the corner cue, which is like making the dog to go forward, sideways, uh, back, and then every time the dog does that, Kayla is going to click and feed. The dog also needs to have a very good obedience because if they don't have good obedience and then there's nothing that they want to do. Initially, we don't put any cue. So when Ronnie has got the exercise, then Joel is going to add the cue forward and immediately when it says forward, Ronnie is going to go forward. Same applies to telling a dog to STOP, meaning stop. The dog will stop on cue and then Joel is going to do the forward corner cue again. The dog and the handler has to work as, as a team. Now Joel is going to demonstrate to us what we call a straight line concept. The straight line co concept means that the dog has to keep on a straight line and then if there is an obstacle in front of the in line with the guide owner, the dog is going to walk around that obstacle and come back onto its uh, straight line. As you can see now, what Ron is going to do there with Joe. Good boy, Ron. With everything, on everything that we're teaching the dogs. So the dogs, when they've mastered everything that we have done from Brighton, Kayla to Joe, we're going to teach our dogs to do turns. When we do turns, we know that dogs, they, look, they, they tend to look at your body, your hand and your voice, which is something that it's in them instinctively. So Joel is going to do a left turn, watch Joel's foot, is going to move his left foot back first, right foot next to his left foot, and then he's going to use his right hand to slap his right thigh. At the same time, he gives a, vo a verbal command for a left. Good, well done, Joel. Good. There's another call cue to stop, and then Joel is going to show us for those that missed that uh, left turn, he might demonstrate. Okay, he's going to do a back turn now. So watch Joel's uh, uh, foot position. Left foot back first, right foot next to the left foot. All these things, uh, these turns, the moving of your body back to in line with your dog's uh, back legs. It's to give your dog a room. It seems as if Ron has been distracted by somebody. Maybe he has noticed the puppy razor. I don't know. So Joel is going to do a back turn again. Good stay. So we always tell uh, our dogs to stay because we don't want them to anticipate. Good boy, Ron. Then the next thing, the next step will be to do a, a right turn. But stay. Good, the verbal cue, right? Good boy, good. Good, another, another left turn and then Ronnie will be done. Good boy, good boy, Ronnie. Good boy. One thing that you might have no, you, you, you are noticing is that the background will change with his front legs and then stop just to indi indicate to a blind person that there is a danger. The guide dog needs to stop whenever it comes to that step up or step down. 
if a dog is uh, walking along a pavement and then it comes to an intersecting road and then the dog will automatically stop. Well done, Shogun. When it gets to a down captain permit, uh, we'll have to listen. I know that when we are training dogs, we get a lot of questions about, oh, does the dog know uh, that it is a stop street, this is a, a robot crossing? That is not correct. I mean, uh, all what we can, the guide owner needs to do is to get there, they know their environment. The first, uh, the, the stopping at down cap and uh, up cap, it's very important for, uh, for two reasons. It's that the guide dog owner will have to orientate themselves in their environment. Another thing will be the guide dog owner is not going to trip on that step up or stop down, a step down. So uh, imagine now, because I mean a guide dog owner will know that in their environment, the first crossing will be, in this in, uh, instance, we're going to just simulate things. Permit will know as a guide dog owner that he's coming to a stop uh, street. Okay, then he's going to be listening for cars. We all, always advise our clients that before they cross, it needs to be all clear or quiet. So if there is any car, they need to listen carefully. When it's clear, then permit will be listening as you can see, and then he's going to cue Shogun to go uh, to cross the road. Good, Shogun. So uh, again, another imaginary like situation where permit will know that this is an, a robot crossing. Then he will identify the two uh, distinct traffic flows of the robot. The parallel traffic is going to move uh, first and this is going to be that uh, parallel traffic. And the thing that we teach our guide dog owners is that if they are approaching a robot crossing and then it's in favor of them while they are going there, they are not allowed to just continue walking. They need to wait there up until the traffic is in uh, their favor. When the traffic is in their favor, then uh, when the parallel perpendicular traffic is going, they're not going to go with the traffic because it's against them. And then when the perpendicular traffic uh, stops, and then the robot turns uh, green for the parallel traffic, then it is the guide dog owner's responsibility to know that then I'm going to go immediately when the parallel traffic goes, as you can see Percy doing that, permit will know as the guide dog owner that he needs to do a crossing uh, with his dog. Because if he can make a mistake to judge that, then which means him and his dog are going to be a sausage a dog, you know. So we don't want that. <laughs> Okay, uh, John. Okay, we have our volunteers, so they are going to give our dogs the food. You know, it's tempting, it's going to be human food, so it's going to be tempting, and our trainer will be giving it too much a uh, high level of, re of reinforcement. Okay, we're going to start with Ronnie first and see if Ronnie is going to. Oh, good. Well done, Ronnie. Okay. All right, it's fine. Good. Good dogs. You see, I mean, that's a difficulty that we have to. Okay, you can come and stand here. Good. Close up. Come this way. Okay, you can pass your ball to... Uh, okay. So all what we want to see is that are the dogs going to be distracted by this, uh, by the kids uh, playing ball. I had a guide dog in the past that was ready to go on class. And then we went to one neighborhood because we go in different environments. And the dog saw children playing ball. I'm telling you, my dog had to be rejected just for that obsessed uh, because he, my dog was so obsessed with the board. Good. With the power chairs, okay. the manual chairs, and we've had a lot of dogs peeing in the arena and horses and all kinds of things. It's good things to sniff. So the same as with guide dogs, the service dogs training starts with obedience. And what, um, oh, now he's found treats as well. 
What Cabello is going to demonstrate to us now is what we call a MyLab. And this is quite an important thing for the service dog to do, infection. And I think he also does the MyLab to get groomed by his owner. And he needs to wear a service dog jacket. It's a red jacket with the guide dog logo on it. It identifies him as a service dog. And this is what allows him to go into the shops and restaurants and public places. Chanti doesn't normally work in this kind of environment. Now I think you guys are all way more interesting than Cabello is. Service dog training is a lot of fun for the dogs. Like guide dogs, we use clicker training. So it's all, every time you do something um, that I want you to do, you get something out of it. And we start off with it all just being a game. The service dog work is, is basically made up of three different commands. So we've got a push, a pull, and a retrieve. And Cabela will be demonstrating to us shortly how we can put those three things together to form a lot of um, tasks that people need. Okay, so Cabela is going to be heading off to our little barrier there because we need to teach the dogs um, how to negotiate narrow spaces. Could be in a shopping mall, narrow aisles that we just fit to. So what he's going to tell Jonty to do is go behind. Or on top. <laughs> He's not stupid. <laughs> All right, we'll try another way then. So what Cabello, when he's gone through there, he'll turn around, come back through that barrier, and we'll make John T go first. Because I don't think they'd appreciate a dog doing that in pick and pay if they have boxes lying in the, in the aisles. Now he can be supervised a bit better. No. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move on to the actual task work. So the big part of a service dog work is a retrieve. And the retrieve can be from the floor, from a coffee table, from kitchen counters that the person's not able to reach. I don't know why anyone would have a remote in the middle of a field, but anyway, well done, John T. Move on to our cupboard so I can show you the, the push.